Welcome to the 2021 Spring <laughs> Semester Online Art Show. Yes, uh, welcome everybody. <laughs> and, and, and so it's going to be co-hosted by myself, Professor Allen, and Professor Bunning. Bunning, uh, yes. Her last name. Professor yes. Deneve. <laughs> Professor Guiducci. And uh, it's so wonderful to have all of you here with us. So thank you. Um, now, I think, should we start with the printmaking, Maria? Yes, let's start. Okay, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make it so that you can share your can screen. I can share, uh, okay. Which I have done. And so now you should be able to take over. Yes, if it shows, ah, oh, that is good, perfect. Okay, so. Yes, this is, we start because this is also in Kunst Matrix, the first room. And uh, now, <laughs> actually, this is always, why, why don't, ah, there are fine. And now, actually, I give the word to Lily. Where is she? Is she there? I'm right here. It's just my ah, Okay. So because Lily is uh, sort of introducing the course and everything. When Lily is talking, I just do a little round. Don't wonder about the size of the images. This is one of the big secrets in Kunstmatrix, <laughs> how to put the image right. So some are bigger than in reality and some are smaller, but more or less. Um, they're all hanging there. Yeah, Lily, would you like to give a little introduction when I just sort of give a little round? Sure. Um, okay, like uh, many of the fine arts courses, the printmaking course is a mixture of level one, level two, and workshop. And this semester was a little bit different because we all, uh, our first project was based off of a poem. And then we found inspiration based off of words or imagery that was derived from that. So we had not done that in previous semesters. So that was a very, uh, interesting first project to do together and get to know everybody. We worked with lino cut and dry point mostly and everyone worked off of their own inspiration. So it was really nice to see everyone's styles. And as a final project, everyone did their own individual tiles, which I see it in the background the there. We go in the end, we will. Mm -hmm. So we'll see that at the end. So everyone did their own individual tiles and then Marina put them all together to make our own um, tile floor that we created. So I have a list of names and I will go ahead and get started with that. So the first, yes, is Eliane. Hi everyone. Um, this is my first year at AUR and also my first lesson with Marina Bunich um, for printmaking one. These are my three prints um, in front of us. We can see some general um, things that are similar. Like I really love using just kind of natural shapes. I mean, just more like simplistic shapes, but seeing how I can challenge that idea and creating space and rhythm within uh, my pieces. I, I'm talking about this specific one the most because it's introduced more color. And then this, this one that we're just seeing is actually one I did during quarantine when I was at home in Belgium with my own materials, which was a bit of a challenge. But um, so the piece on the left, we, yes, this one, um, this is actually an unfinished piece, is, as we uh, mentioned. But um, if I were to finish even more, I would introduce more shapes and kind of almost give this idea of like going back into space as if this like yellow shape is almost like a form of light. But overall, it's really like the play of the blue, uh, the blue and the yellow. And then these shapes in the foreground, almost like floating. I mean, kind of similar to a bit of like, you know, like almost pills, medicine, or just general like natural shapes. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of what I'm interested in using color for in the future, hopefully. And then we're do using patterns and repeated motifs to okay. kind of bit more complex. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so we go to the next one. Oops. which so, is yeah yeah hello my name is hannah for those who don't know um and these are my prints um i, I 
I don't think of myself as um, someone who's good at abstract work. I feel like I usually need to see something in front of me to be able to recreate it. So I did um, first uh, the scene in the bar around the corner from the AUR art building. And yeah, this one, I just thought it was a beautiful yet ordinary scene. Um, and I wanted to commit it to print. Um, and then I also did um, Rubik's cubes, which are also just like an ordinary object that is so complex and beautiful and I think deserves some recognition and I will never be able to solve one in real life. So I might as well draw one instead. Um, but then I wanted to try working with abstract uh, art and I first did it in black and white. Let, let me interrupt it's really quickly. Can, can you, can whoever, whoever's not speaking, can you put mute on please? Yes, because there's some sort of funny noises. Good, okay. Um, so, first it was obviously in black and white and I just really liked the way it seemed to kind of come out of the page look like an optical illusion um, and then I wanted to experiment with different colors um, and different ways of doing it so I did the like purple underneath first and then printed white on top of it without letting the purple fully dry uh, so it gave it like a really fun texture that I feel I think seems more dynamic and seems to like come out at you more. And it was really fun. Okay. Um, Marina is muted. Sorry, Beatrice and Margarita, they are not here because uh, they smashed all the uh, glasses of her car in the morning and now they are at the Questura. So I don't know when they will come. Uh, uh, yeah, this and actually they didn't have time to even send me something because they didn't know before. Um, so this is all Beatrice who, who worked also with different plates and different colors and then with geometrical shapes. Well, I don't know. I will not say too much. And this is actually uh, Margarita who also can't come, which is really a shame because but what to do. Yeah, this is with two different plates actually with a small plate here and then a bigger plate where she she put it on top and this is the original plate this is actually rather small the sizes are always all a little bit mixed up okay so yeah i'm sorry that they can't talk for themselves okay so we go on ah angelica are you there Hi. No. angelica Ah, yeah, yes, there you are. Okay, good. So this piece is um, originally, oh, yep, that's, a, that's another one. Oops, oh, sorry. Okay, uh, I just wanted to start off by saying that I never took printmaking before, and I was very surprised about how much patience to have for this sort of practice of art. Uh, so for me, this is actually my first plate that I did. I think it's one of, uh, maybe it's my favorite plate, but um, it's originally a sketch that I did kind of um, making a collage of different art pieces in, in the sketchbook class that I had, I think last semester. Um, and I thought it'd be an interesting sketch um, or uh, interesting cut and yeah then I have this one which is the penguins and the sun I actually really love this print because my mom actually made the original sketch that I found in my notebook from maybe two three years ago and so I added like a bunch of different details and so I feel like it's kind of a collaboration between me and my mom mm -hmm. so, um, I worked a bit with 
Um, so it's just one plate and I painted half of it with the black ink and then the other half with the orange ink. Um, so I think I made like a cool little contrast. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. So, oh, geez. sorry, I'm on campus near a bunch of other students. Um, so basically my entire piece for this semester was, um, these, this triptych. So I did the two background plates and then I would print the three other plates on top of each other. I kind of wanted to look at different levels of the ocean and how depth changes over it. Um, and I was just kind of working with solid lines and a lot of detail. Okay, good. Okay. These are mine. Um, this, is part, this was a part of a series I did and they were supposed to be topographical maps, but then they kind of looked like koala thumbprints and then human thumbprints, which I thought was pretty cool. And it came in a, like a six, but six was too many. Um, I was playing around with texture because um, I'm more attracted to texture and contemporary. Next. This was based off of the poem. Um, it was like how to cut up pigs. So I decided to do a, a bunch of different prints or sketches of different cuts of pork. And I thought it was really fun and interesting. And then I liked the contrast between, uh, contrast between them. This was the suicide plate. Um, it took three weeks for me to complete it. I started off with a yellow base, then added pink, then added blue, then added green. And um, it turned out a lot better than I was expecting, but it took a lot of time, but I'm really happy with the ending. Good. And Margarita and Beatrice apologize that they can't be here. They are nature-based prints. Yeah, I said that yeah. at the beginning, right. Uh, okay, Lily. This is mine. Yeah, it's Rachel's. Sorry, one second. Okay, there should be less noise. Um, hi, I'm Rachel, and um, this was my first time. Oh, the one on the left was my first time working with different colors in the plates, but this in the middle was my um, my first plate inspired by uh, one of the poems that we had at the beginning of the course. And, and the strawberry was, okay. The strawberry um, was inspired by the Quadriennale art show that was uh, here in Rome this year. There was a large piece um, and then the cat carving was one I did before the class. So I came into the class with this one. I was excited to try it. And um, yeah, I was in the workshop. So I enjoyed a little bit of, um, you know, freedom with, you know, experimenting. And I did experiment a lot this semester, which was great. Okay, that's me. Um... This whole semester, I had a book of anatomy for artists and I would do drawings and uh, base my prints off of images from the book. And this one in particular was, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, I did a lot of study of legs. Uh, the first one was a lino cut. This is an indirect print. And the third is dry point. And all of these images are from the same, um, study of anatomy. Uh, this first one took about half the semester of trial and error. And um, I really like it because it's kind of playful. The legs are either falling or kind of dancing around and you can see the ligaments and the bones. And I think it's a really successful print.
Uh, yeah, this one. Yep, that's it. Indirect. And uh, yeah, this is uh, only my second dry point I've done. So I was just talking with Marina today about doing um, multiple colors of a metal plate, um, especially with this image and coming back to it next semester. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so hi, I'm Daniela. Um, so this is my second time in the printmaking course. Uh, so the first one we saw was my uh, couples print where I used four different plates. I was uh, playing around with the idea of freedom and suppression. And I wanted to experiment with different colors. So I was obviously placing them on top of each other. Um, the second one is my, my bunny print where I was focusing on the whole aspect of looking inside like the bones and kind of like a dark twist to it. So it kind of looked like an x-ray. And then the third one is my bat print, uh, which I based off of a poem that we, one of the poems that we read at the beginning of the semester. And yeah. Hi, uh, yes, this is mine. Uh, and it's, this was like a design that I did. It was supposed to be a sort of uh, wallpaper design. So, and then I printed it in two different uh, colors. Uh, this one is a representation of like Ottoman interior details and um, actually I got inspired by Rachel uh, in my class who did like the type like the uh, what do you call the, the on the columns the, the marble model. yeah and uh, and I really liked how it turned out because it's the light how it comes in I liked how I carved out uh, where the the arches are so Uh, this one is the last one and it's uh i mean i want i the intention of it was to do like a half of the face and then i did it on another print so it can be like two sides and uh and yeah like i the background i uh it was just like it was supposed to be also um a wallpaper but i made it into i transformed it into like a background for the for the faces and yeah that's it. Uh, yeah, that was, and this was our, uh, what, what Lily said at the beginning, where everybody did a trial, because I had the feeling that in this time, it's good to do a final, that we do it sort of together or something. And this is what came out. I think it's really nice and um, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> I hope you're also happy about that. <laughs> what came out, it's uh, rich and full and little, little different uh, things in it. Okay, good. So I would say with printmaking we have done. Then I go, uh, okay. Okay, so I think you're passing the baton to me, correct, Marina? Yes, 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 yes. Fantastic, okay, I'm gonna share my screen here. Uh, I believe Elisa is with us, correct? Give me a shout out, Elisa, you're there, right? I'm here. Fantastic, right. and Daniela is with us, and Isabella is with us. So we're gonna start with the painting. And uh, let me just give a quick overview. Um, have these been normal times, we probably would have uh, done portrait painting. Um, so one of the challenges that I faced going into this semester was figuring out how I could have models that didn't need masks. And I decided that we would uh, work on some copies um, and then that led me to decide that we should just work, uh, uh, explore oil painting a la prima and work from certainly one of the masters of a la prima painting, which is John Singer Sargent. 
So uh, the first painting that we did, here's what I propose. I will, I'll take Ella's because she's not with us. And then um, Eliza, you can, you, I was thinking that perhaps you could explain the second one. Uh, and then um, Isabella, I'm gonna let you explain the landscape. And then Daniela, I'll have you do the portrait. Okay, you can talk about how we did it. So, um, but let me just go ahead and start here. I'll give you a quick flyby. This is, the, each of them picked their three best. There were four total. So there's one, there's a self portrait that uh, Ella made. And then this was the first copy that we did um, of a John Singer Sargent painting. And I think it's important also to, to note that when we were making these copies, we had a copy of the painting that was right alongside the canvas so that we could essentially use the painting as a, as a surrogate for um, portrait painting. And I guess these were maybe about done, you know, in about two or two or three sessions, I think is, is fair, so. There we go, that's the first one. So now I'm gonna, we're gonna move on. And um, Elisa, why don't you take this one on? Okay, so um, this was my first time painting. And so um, I feel like this one is definitely better than the first one. We, we did two copies of um, heads and I feel like the first one was almost like an experiment for me. Um, and then this one, um, I used all, you know, the techniques uh, advice that I got on the first one and I feel like I really kind of knew what I was doing better than the first one in this one and then going um, to my portrait my like picture portrait um, I feel like what I did here was basically not really follow uh, the picture itself but mostly follow the advice that I had gotten for the second head and take what I used to do that and like put it on on my my own my own face so yeah, that's what I did. And then there's your... Yeah, that's my first, first one. one. Good. Fantastic. Okay. All the art classes. Isabella, you, my, this is your self-portrait. Uh, yeah. I don't know why it's got the lines over it because in the picture it doesn't look like that, but... Yeah, I don't know either. But I tell you what, I'd like, if I can, I'd like you to explain what we did on this painting. Um. On the landscape painting, we were, the assignment was to find a sergeant painting of a landscape that we liked and then take a picture of Rome uh, ourselves uh, that was similar to the painting and then try to do the painting of Rome using the colors of the sergeant painting, if that makes sense. So this is just a little, uh, a little side street uh, I saw in passing. Uh, walking around the city and I really liked the the way the light hit the buildings in the back and the cobblestone uh, closer to us and the way the shadows fell so that's why I picked it and um, the painting the sergeant painting where I used the colors from was the um, what's it called uh, street in Venice um, where there was a lot of use of blue and yellow. So that's what I was trying to convey as well. Excellent. And then that's your second copy. Yeah. A lot smoother and better than it originally was. Indeed. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Isabella. All right. Daniela, do you want me to, are you there? Yep. Perfect. I thought I was talking about my self-portrait. Yeah, you are. We're going to the self-portrait. There you go. So for this assignment, we had to take a selfie in black and white first. Um, and then trans we did like an oil transfer onto the canvas. And basically what we had to do is we had to use the color palette from John Singer Sargent's second copy that we did. Yep. And basically work off of it as we had, obviously the, the photo that we took was in black and white. So we had to get inspired by the colors and use the same techniques that we learned with the smooth edges and all that. Fantastic. Okay, and then this is the other, 
the other copy, the first painting that we did. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. So that is our, that was the, the spring semester painting class. Um, and then I think, why don't we go from the painting class, let's go to the drawing class. So I'll zoom in here. And of the three, let's just, um, let's pick one that you want to talk about. So uh, Elian, are you there? Yes. Which, I which, which one would you like to, uh, uh, to talk about? Can we pick the last one, please? Sure. Okay, so in this class, we tried to figure out how to draw in perspective. I don't think I, I did, but that's okay. Um, so I chose this drawing just because I personally really enjoyed um, kind of figuring out that I really um, liked shading, like the shading aspect of the drawing. But um, this is basically the fountain close to school grounds. Um, I think it's called Fontana da Paola or something. And um, it was a really complex structure to draw because there's such detail to um, the fountain with all the columns. And then also it, there being water in, within the image, which I also tried to kind of convey with um, rubbing out some areas. Um, there's not that much to say about this, except for the fact that during this uh, class, we just went to different locations and tried to um, with relative measurements and with the theories that we learned during class, trying to pick the scene, the landscape that we saw in front of us and using things like our eye level, um, the horizon line, center view, and all these different things, such as the vanishing points and the angles of the structures that we were looking at. So yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah, me. now Elian, help me out too with the introduction to this class, because you remember, who else were we looking at? Uh, it was kind of the theme, one of the themes of the, of the class actually was, was uh, uh, an artist known as Piranesi who made a series of drawings of Rome and used obviously perspective. Uh, this is in the 18th century. So we were also looking at images of Piranesi which um, one of the students actually did some copies of those drawings and we'll see here in a minute. Sophia, which one would you like to talk about? Uh, well, let's talk about the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> let me give a preview of. Just because I feel like uh, everybody's going to be talking about Fontana. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, this is a sketch of my bathroom, and I was actually sitting on the floor. Sorry, I'm walking down the street. <laughs> um, walking back home from class. Um, I sat on the bathroom floor for like three hours and sketched until I couldn't sketch anymore. And I was using one point perspective to kind of simplify the tiles and simplify all of the things that we had been learning in Tim's class, just because I felt like everything that we went to go look at was just a little bit too complicated for me. There was too much going on, it was really busy. And it was nice to be able to sketch out my bathroom because it was a lot simpler. Okay, hold on. All right, thank you, Sophia. Let's move on here. Let's go to the next person here. Uh, let's see, this is, who is this? Uh, that one's mine. L uh, Lily, right, Lily. Okay, which one would you like to talk about, Lily? Let me uh, just kind of breeze through these here. Yeah, probably the church. The church, okay, so let's yeah. see the, the Chiesa del Gesù. Mm -hmm. And then there's Piazza del Popolo, and now we'll kick back to the Chiesa de Gesù. Okay. Uh, I like this one because uh, the horizon line was so low. And then all, what we were drawing was so above the horizon line, that was a particular challenge. And I really um, just enjoyed being in the church and um, drawing just the beautiful architecture. And yeah, so this is in two point perspective. And yeah, I really like how it came out. All right. Yeah. Let's see if I click that, what happens? Oh, that turns us this way. Okay. All right, well, I tell you what, there are some of Lily's paintings which we're gonna come back to, but let's finish off the, um, let's finish off the class. And actually, let me go over here to Ariana. 
because this will show us some of her copies of Piranesi. Ariana, are you there? Yes. Okay, can you just maybe talk about these real quick and then we'll also go to one of your other drawings here in a minute. Okay, uh, yeah, this is a copy. We were supposed to actually do a completely different homework, but I messed up with the assignment and I actually copied them. Um, yeah, uh, because this was before we even went into the two point perspective. So the one on the right is kind of this or this uh, distorted, distorted, and uh, but I like the one on the left because I actually added like my style or, or like different details on the side of the, like the vertical lines going down, and uh, I liked how the way the arches turned out. Great. All right, and then here we go, and it's nice to see. Ariana's images, because they show you also a, a photo of where we were, what we were looking at. So there is Piazza del Popolo. Do you want to talk about this one, Ariana, or do you want to talk about this one? Uh, no, I'll talk about Piazza del Popolo. Piazza del Popolo, va benissimo. Okay, so this, uh, we had to go up and draw from uh, above uh, the, the piazza. And I really like how it turned out because I used the, uh, what's it called in the middle, the obelisk to determine like the height of the building as a reference. And um, I'm glad that I had like at the end some time to go into like the details of the of the dome of the church. And yeah, I think that I, I, I think that it was my su most successful drawing in this class. Uh, so I enjoyed I enjoyed it. Great, super. And that's a lovely drawing too. If that's also the interior of uh, the Chiesa de Gesù. Okay. Excuse me. Let's see. Ophelia, I saw your name earlier. Are um, you there? Hi. Hi. Hang on. Um, Something's fishy. Oh, there we go. Let me, um, um, which one would you like to talk about, Ophelia? I'll just kind of scroll through these. Um, no. <laughs> no. Wait, go to the last. <laughs> Want to go to the last one? Um, no, no, no. Let's go back to the first. That was like from the first week. Let's yeah, yeah. This not, was the Piazza del Popolo. Not, okay, and then here we go. All right. Um, yeah, I guess the Fontanone, because we drew it two times, the first time in one point perspective, the second time in two point perspective. Um, yeah, I guess because the vanishing point was off the page, you kind of had to go at it like intuitively, which was something that throughout the semester, I guess, was a skill that I really had to develop. I had never taken an art course, so um, it's a bit difficult, but I think I managed to get like the angles correctly. I mean, I didn't include all the like fine detailing, but I think I think the gist is there. Um, so yeah, that was our final assignment, and we did it um, over two the course of two days. And Fantastic. Okay, Ophelia, thank you. So there we go. Let's see. The, that's Ophelia, and if we go to the next one, we have. Um, let's see. This is Edo Eduardo Cisei. I think that suspect that maybe Eduardo's not with us. So there's his Piazza del Popolo. And then this one was a quite nice drawing that he did. This is near the Arapaches, the fountains. Um, I believe this was the similar, uh, same assignment that, uh, that uh, Sofia mentioned, uh, where I wanted them just to look basically at, a, at something that had a clear geometric floor. And so this was one of their, one of the possibilities, so. I thought Eduardo did a very nice job with that. Okay, so let's see. I think that is all of the drawing. Let me just make sure. We'll do a sweep of the room. I think that is. So Lily, I think we'll go to your painting. And uh, you know, I think we've got, I think we've got some time to do to do the three. So let's. Uh, why don't we start with that one? Okay, great. So this semester I did an independent study and I focused on portraiture and uh, achieving the delicacy of skin tone and turn of the figure. So this one in particular is a master copy of a contemporary realist painter, Jacob Collins. And this one I really enjoyed because the big challenge was both achieving the turn of the head going back and the shoulder going forward into space, as well as getting the softness and the opacity of the skin. 
and the background was just was very fun to make as well some challenges but uh yeah i also discovered my love of uh backgrounds and how the background informs the figure uh the second one i um as tim mentioned before we couldn't work from live models so i worked either from photos or from a copy so this one i took a photo of my friend and yeah, I just, um, I love the dark background, how it plays against the light on his sweater and um, the bloom of light coming from his cheek is really lovely as well. And this one's quite large too, it's 60 by 80. So I really enjoy working um, on larger canvases. Uh, this last one is a self-portrait. This one is, I think my favorite. I think I really achieved a good understanding of how to create skin tone and softness and um, manage middle tones, which I think has been a particular challenge for me. And this one is interesting in particular because I had a completely different self-portrait before with the blue background and a different expression and the body half uh, had clothes. <laughs> and when I repainted the skin on the bottom half, I think Professor Allen and I both realized that. And I think we had to redo the whole thing because it just sort of took on a new life. And I love the way the light comes in, with the gradation in the background and the softness of how the chin meets the neck. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. Yeah, this was, a, uh, I'll um, permit myself just to say a quick word. Mm -hmm. I think this was a transformational moment for Lily. It's a quite a milestone. It's a beautiful painting. And I think it's the perfect thing to catapult you toward your capstone, mm -hmm. which we will do next semester. Mm -hmm. Fine job, Lily. Thank you. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So there we go. Uh, that was the independent study of painting with, um, with Lily. And then we had the Piranese Aroma, the perspective drawing um, there and there, don't get motion sickness. And then we had the, uh, the portrait painting class in oil. Um, and that's a wrap. So now I'm going to pass the baton to my colleague, Professor Di Neve. So let me stop share. Nice. Christine, would you like me to start with the, uh, with the collage? Yes, exactly. And I, I would invite Philip to, to introduce the course. Okay. So that's perfect. Okay. Philip, are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Hi. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Uh, so hi, everyone. So I'm going to be presenting our Roman sketchbook course that's taught by Professor Deneve. So throughout this course, we've been like developing our sketching skills through a myriad of tactics. Uh, as someone who's never really like sketched in her life, I kind of came in with blind eyes. And my first few sketches were like really indicative of this. But throughout this course, I kind of managed to learn about all that's concerned with becoming a better sketcher. So uh, basically, we learned a lot about perspectives and how to frame landscapes and figures so that they look realistic, uh, proportions and making sure that all the relative pieces of that which you're trying to draw are collectively sized, uh, angles and making sure not to exaggerate them, and tactics such as chiaroscuro and general shading, and also using things such as charcoal pencils, white oil pencils, sanguine oil pencils, uh, like watercolor techniques and other tools that professor provided. Uh, I hope that I can speak for like all the people that took this course and seeing that our drawing skills developed significantly. Um, and we visited locations such as Chirico Massimo, the Trajan Column and its accompanying forum. And like many churches that we traveled to provide us, us with a vast array of locations where we could help to hone our skills. So in this exhibition, we're kind of be, kind of be presenting our finals which are related to the way we interpret Rome. So throughout the pres uh, presentation of them, you're gonna see a number of different interpretations and designs that will show the many different ways this concept may be tackled. And uh, me and my fellow students have attempted to depict the city through our own eyes. And I hope that those in this call will appreciate our attempts at doing this. So I'm just gonna pass it back to the professor so we can continue. Okay, thank you, Philip. <laughs> so um, if uh, Tim go, yeah. moves on, there are, um, yeah, there are three, uh, a lot of drawings actually of Isabella. We're not going to commend them because I've put their, them there for the art majors critique, 
But anyway, it gives an idea of the variety of subjects and techniques that we have dealing with. So, um, okay. Did, did you want me to zoom in on one, Christine, or just that's it, yeah? Yeah, we can just very shortly zoom in on each one and see the technique. So okay. the, uh, the first one was a Sharpie, then we had cross contour shading with the pencil, okay? The second image, in a way, reassumes our study of chiaroscuro. And there are, um, yeah, some sketches in the church and some homework, <laughs> such as the eggs. Okay, and the third image was about introducing different techniques. So charcoal, sanguine, pencil, etc. Okay, so let's go to the first final, which is of Isabella. Isabella? Hi. Okay. So this is my final piece. It's, um supposed to be uh, a realistic semi-interior of a church, but with like graphic images of graffiti. And my idea behind it was to combine like the stereotypical idea of Rome, of it being like old and um, with a lot of history and a lot of like very recognizable architecture, but as well as it being modern and like any other city in the world at the same time with the graffiti. So that was my idea behind it. Okay, thank you. So we can move on. And here we have a drawing of Nana on Tom's paper. Hi. So I give the word to Nana. Hello. So this course was my first experience with drawing. And with this final piece, I wanted to unite the things that come to my mind whenever I think about Rome. So you can see the uh, Trevi Fountain centerpiece in the center, which is kind of ascending on the Tiber. And um, behind it, I wanted to put uh, Roman pine trees, which are very typical of Rome. And I used white uh, chalk and charcoal pencils uh, on the tone paper because I wanted to create this kind of gloomy weather mood. Um, and I also have to say that I enjoyed working with this technique. Okay, so this gloomy mood, we weren't lucky with the weather. <laughs> it was often raining on Tuesdays. Okay, this is the work of G. Are Hi, you here? hello, I'm here. Yeah, so okay, um, I... This uh, work, yeah, I, I drew um, a Fiat Cinquecento, Fiat 500. I think it's very cute, so that's why I added in, and it's very <laughs> Italian. The first thing I see when I get here was um, the Fiat 500, that's why I drew it. So, and the technique is ink, isn't it? Yep. And, and you combined three elements in this drawing, um, yes, I did um, watercolor on the car. And I used the pen and ink on the trudging column for the tile, um, the cobblestone tile, I use paintbrush. Okay. And if I remember well, you, you took three elements, different elements of Rome. So there is Ostia, the sea, and yeah. there's also column. Which one is it? Um, if that one is the trudging column. Okay, okay. Now, because the whole idea was to put different elements, no? of Rome mm -hmm. and put it together in one original composition. Composition, And this is, I think, turned out pretty good. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Okay, let's move on. Philips? Yeah. Drawing. <laughs> um, so I, I titled it Graffiti and Antiquity. Um, and I took this like really nice black and white photography course. And it kind of like inspired me and made me like find, I don't know, kind of the image that I have of Rome in my head for being here for the past four years. So I kind of just like had this picture of Casa San Angelo that had, it was just completely black, but the sky was like super textured with clouds and like different colors and everything. And I thought it looked really cool, but I thought that that would be a little less. And I also want to capture like the aspect of Rome that's away from the uh, center of it. If you kind of go to like San Paulo and all these regions. So I, uh, I had this picture of uh, this brick uh, with graffiti on it and I decided to put it in. Um, and then I put like this kind of 3D 
motif or something around it because I thought it would kind of pop out. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, very good. Okay, thank you. This is the final of Jade. Are yeah. you there? I am, I am. Okay. Um, so for my final, uh, I was kind of not like inspired at all, but I just thought that to be Rome, because I only lived here since January, it's been pretty dark and pretty rainy and uh, a lot of quarantining. So I just thought I'm just going to draw a window because I've been seeing Rome mostly through my windows and uh, I can see the San Pietro from my house. So it's been my main view. And then, I don't know, I just love the aqueducts of Rome. And uh, so I just drew one. And then the little drawing in the bottom, that's from um, the Santa Maria church. I thought it was really beautiful. Um, and then I've been seeing the mountains in the background of Rome since January. And I've been wanting to go, but I haven't gotten the chance. So, yeah. And I used white pencil and white charcoals. OK, very good. Thank you. This is Kyla. Kyla? Yeah, so this is the Eyes of Truth. Uh, basically, it's the elements I used was, um, I don't know if the graffiti has a name, but there's a popular graffiti, I think only, in, I've only seen in Trastevere, of an old woman with um, her scarf. Uh, yeah, and so it's that mixed with uh, Boca de la Verita, so the mouth of truth. Um, that's why it's the token thing. And uh, in front of it is the silhouette of, uh, it's supposed to be a silhouette of like young people, like having fun, drinking, partying. <laughs> um, it's kind of how I see Rome because in some, uh, I kind of see it as like, yeah, now it's like a bunch of young people a lot. Uh, like if you go at night, especially, or just not even just young people, but I just mean like it's very lively and, but it still has that old, you know, because it is very, it's a very old, you know, place and city. And so I guess it's just kind of like, even though in the, for, uh, in the front, there is like all this partiness and liveliness in the background, there's still that, the fact that it's, it's really old and beautiful in a lot of ways. And I guess that's kind of what it is. So I used uh, black ink. Um, and uh, Sam Green, so yeah. Okay. This is William. So, <clears throat> I'm here. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, so I mean, it's not too evident. What I was kind of inspired with was this initial sketch of this woman that you can see there, and it kind of reminded me of a lot of that statues you kind of see around the city and that was kind of the main uh focus what i wanted to make it initially i had made the like some sort of brick wall a part of it so i sort of added in that that later and yeah so i mainly kind of worked around the woman i ended up adding the black box because i just kind of felt that it needed something abstract and it was kind of an ugly empty space and i didn't really know how, what a, how else to uh, fill it up with but I was pretty happy how it turned out. It was mainly working with the inks, which I think I enjoyed most out of the entire course, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's, what's send the black box for? <laughs> I don't know. That's the <laughs> mystery. Know. Okay. She's okay. looking away. I wanted her to have her look away from something because she's, ah, okay. she's covering Perfect. her face. Yes. Okay, it's kind of a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, let's move on. So that's Rachel. Hi. Um, I titled this Monumental Rome and it's like Sharpie on paper. And um, I wanted to like commemorate some of like the most memorable things uh, from my time here, which have been uh, a lot of cobblestones and stairs mostly, but as well as like the umbrella trees and then, um, you know, the river and the bridge over the river with the reflection and then like in the top over here in the top right is the castle of Santa Angelo, um, which I wanted to like focus mostly on that. So that's really detailed. And then on the left, I have the um, obelisk in Piazza del Popolo, um, or I'm sorry, in St. Peter's Square, not in Piazza del, well, no, that's the same place. <laughs> and then um, and the 
statues from like the Vatican. Okay, so this was the last drawing of sketchbook. You've done, every, uh, everybody has done a very good job. It's a, there is a big variety of the sensations about Rome described. And um, yeah, after this room, we could move to the room of Fresca Mosaico, uh, the course of Francesca, and yeah, there is a panel on the left. <laughs> if you go to the left, you know, well, we can start at Mosaic too. Hello everyone, and um, thank you, thank you first of all to Christian, Marina, and uh, Tim for uh, welcoming me in this in this exhibition. It's uh, it's very exciting to be part of this, uh, and thank you, Christian, too, um, for hosting me in your uh, in your room as well and helping with the setup and and everything. So the mosaic workshop is um, is something that was new from from this year. And it was one credit course, but uh, uh, I think that Ophelia can um, can say more about that better than uh, I would. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I did this course, I think, now two weekends ago, and it was two days. Um, it was a very painstaking um, process, but it was um, everything turned out like super beautifully. Um, we had to do like a lot of steps um such as like cutting the tiles down um or the tessere and then putting them in the box like flipping them making sure everything dried um it was just a really really nice like lovely class um i think that's kind of it is there something else you'd like me to say that's mine yeah yeah, yeah no that's that's perfect thank you this is um, the, my yes. fingers are in it like i'm so sorry for that but i did um an ocean wave I guess people say it looks like a witch hat. I don't know. There's a lot of interpretations for this, but um, yeah, it took, um, like I said, like two days um, and it dried like super beautifully. Even now, like the colors are even like uh, stronger, I would say. And yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah. So they, um, this is for Catherine, from Catherine. She's not here. Uh, today, but um, so the main challenge was definitely being patient enough to cut the tiles in small bits and um, and different shapes as well to make sure to accommodate all the um, especially the curved lines and the small detail and the uh, ear catering went uh, pretty detailed on um, on some of the on some of the elements like the letters. Of, on on that that was um, quite a challenge, but um, she did. A, everyone did a great work, considering this was the first time. I don't know if um, Daniela wants to say something about that, like two words. I mean, uh, I can. So for me, it was a very interesting process. I really, really enjoyed the course. Um, it was very long to put all of the tie like the tessera into the the clay it drove me insane i have to say and i kept thinking that my fingers were going to fall off when it came to cutting the tessera as well because they they were flying around the room every single time we were cutting them but um i really really enjoyed the course and the design came out really really well so i'm very happy with it thank you yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a bit of a um, physical process as well. And, um, and we did all the steps from cutting the tiles to facing and applying it on, uh, on mortar. So it's um, also the, the, the materials, the material aspect was, uh, was important. I don't know if Lily wants yeah. to uh, talk well <laughs> on, on the painstaking process. Oh yeah, I have the same sentiment. It was, I really, really enjoyed it, but I also have a um, pretty massive appreciation for tile floors that surround the city and ceilings and walls and everything. Uh, yeah, the process was, uh, it was very, um, it was a lot, <laughs> but it was, it was really rewarding and it was, really interesting to see the ancient way of creating a mosaic and I really enjoyed it and I want to do it again I don't know how but I want to make it happen so 
and, yeah. um, and we use two different techniques for cutting the tiles that uh, Lily boats use in this uh, because um, we had black and white uh, simple tiles that were like half a centimeter thick so you could easily cut them with pliers, which was a little bit tough on tendons, as they probably <laughs> learned at the end of the day. And then for the colored tiles, they, they use the more traditional technique with the hammer and, uh, and the chisel where, uh, that you need when you need to, to cut thicker tiles. So yes, it's, um, it's a bit of a complex process. And this is from Cameron that is not here today, but she also went uh, um, she was very ambitious, but she, she, she did well because the, the result came uh, very well. And here the challenge was obviously to uh, have very tiny um, tesseras, especially to do the lines. Obviously working with only two colors, it's, it's difficult to, um, to have the outline well, um, well delineated, but she did a great job with that. And she also managed to keep all the small pieces during the different uh, phases of um, application and, um, and cleaning. And then, for example, here you, you can see the difference between the background when uh, she was basically had to speed up a little bit and uh, she went with larger tiles and instead the um, details of the, of the, inner, um, of the inner design. Fantastic. Okay, so that's the that's the mosaic. Yes. Let me back up here. So everyone was uh, was was very brave because again the the tools were uh, were new, and uh, all the techniques and materials were also new. So they would, they really did uh, did well. And um, for the fresco, I, I'm gonna say just a few words about the process. This is just one class that I do within. Uh, the conservation and restoration course, which is mainly focused on theory, but um, this was the, the chance to give uh, the students also um, an idea of the, of the practical components of, of conservation as applied to original techniques and original materials uh, that constitute the, um, the base behind uh, these, uh, these artworks that uh, that we see, for example, when we visit the Sistine Chapel, what the actual uh, practical technique and materials uh, behind it, and um, and they this was over one just one class, so the three hours the whole process, and the initial phase was to learn to mix the mortar we the plaster we use the um, traditional uh, recipe with lime putty and uh, marble dust for which they spread, they had to spread on the, on the style that we used as support. And then um, to transfer the, the, the design, to transfer the, the picture, we used this uh, uh, spolver technique or uh, dusting, pouncing. I'm not sure what's, uh, what's the name, which, which was the same technique that, uh, uh, again, Michelangelo used, for example, for, uh, for the Sistine Chapel. And then when you, you have transferred the, um, the design, you can paint on top of that. You can use these little dots as your guideline and you can paint on, uh, on top of them. And again, in, uh, in both the mosaic and the fresco process, I, my, my focus was really to get them to experience the, um, the materials and the techniques uh, rather than focusing on, um, on the final artistic result let's say, to, to sort of get a first-hand experience. These are, there are some of the, of the results. This is um, from, I, I think, Rowan, are you here? Would you like I, yeah, no, um, that's mine. Um, yeah, I thought it was really, really fun. I just kept thinking um, about Michelangelo the entire time, just feeling like a deeper connection with him. Um, I have a lot more respect just for how time consuming just even a small little like tile would be. Um, but no, I loved it. Yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> Thank you. So I gave them, basically I gave them some, um, some photos uh, from famous frescoes to choose from, or uh, for example, Jamie decided to go free end so he did his own, uh, um, his own design, which I think is uh, Roman inspired, like an ancient Roman inspired. Um, but yes, it's, uh, it couldn't be here today. 
and then uh, oh this is okay this one uh, Jade maybe can say something about it I think it was particularly challenging for her because she didn't do it in the class with us but she did it at home so I don't know if you wanna uh, if she's still around and I am I am um yeah, no, honestly, I had uh, your recording for all the instructions, so I tried my best to follow it uh, step by step. It was kind of challenging with like the gloves and like clicking the computer and everything, but it turned out fine. Um, took longer than I thought, but it was fun. And uh, now it's, uh, it's on my table, so it's fun. <laughs> it's fun to have around. And uh, yeah, that was, it was nice. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, and it also, it's, it's difficult to appreciate it from the photo, but the, the way they spread the plaster also gives a different um, final effect. So the texture, let's say, of the, of the plaster will, uh, will also influence the... This is uh, Jade. She also did uh, her own uh, design. She, um, she did the, um, the drawing on the, on the tracing paper and then she transferred it, but this was her own. Uh, uh, design. I'm not sure there should maybe there is one more or not. not sure. I think that's it. Uh, that's it. That's, that's it. it. So, um, Professor, we have to go back to the sketchbook uh, room for a moment. So, uh, I have changed the dimensions of all the finals. And what happened that one of the drawings was removed. <laughs> and uh, um, it was a drawing that was just next to the drawing of Nana. So what we were going to do, we find it typing in the name of Bronwyn, uh, please. And, and we see her final. Okay, so Bronwyn Bain. Uh, give me the spelling. N W R B R O N W I Bronwyn N. I cannot see it because it's so little. Bronwyn, okay. With an I or with a Y? With a Y. Yes. Okay, that's it. That's it. Here it is. <laughs> Sorry, Bronwyn, for that. Could you please comment your final? Um, yeah. um, okay. I will put it up in the show after. I just um, did it with a. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I just did it with ink and outlined a little bit in Sharpie. Um, I did uh, the tip and just part of um, the inside of uh, St. Peter's Basilica. In um, Vatican City and someone taking a picture. Yeah, the sound is not that. That's it. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, so um, okay. I just wanted to, uh, Professor Guiducci, I want to thank you on behalf of, of, of all of us. We, I was there one day when you did your fresco class, and I know it was a raving success because I witnessed it. And the mosaics, I think, are absolutely spectacular. So I hope this is just the first of many times that you are going to... Uh, that you'll be with us. Thanks a lot, Tim. You're okay. really too kind. Thank you for this. Wonderful, team. really wonderful, and and compliments to everybody. Yeah, thank on a you. wonderful show, and I I believe our our fearless leader is with us as well, Professor Gwyn. Um, so I yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Perfect. I, I won't put the video on because I think that will cut me out. Apologies for my late arrival. Um, it seems that everybody's having wonderful technical problems. My art history group will know that if a thunderstorm hits, 
then my class crashes. Um, and that happened this afternoon. So it took me a while to log into. I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you, first of all, to all the classes. Um, I am, again, amazed at the quality. There is a trope in the rhetorical handbooks of classical antiquity called the modesty topos, in which everybody claims, the orators claim at the beginning of their speech that the work that they're about to present is really not up to par. And I noticed that even our professors have used that modesty topos as well as the students. And you really don't need to. This is absolutely spectacular. This is absolutely a, a wonderful show. The variety is amazing. I mean, we've seen mixed media, we've seen different materials, and we've seen sketchbook, we've seen painting, we've seen wonderful prints in a variety of layers and colors. And we have seen some amazing um, oil painting, I think. Uh, it, it is, I'm, I'm almost lost for words because I remain stunned. I mean, Ophelia, you said, oh, this is your first class. You shouldn't say that. It doesn't look like you're a, you are a starter by any means. I mean, it's, it's absolutely great. I mean, um, I'm almost without words for Lillian's uh, final achievement. I think those three paintings are absolutely spectacular. Um, to, no, this is the real drawback of Kunstmatrix, of Kunstmatrix in the fact that it really doesn't give us a sense of the scale because I really did not realize your paintings were so big and I really do want to see them in the original. Um, it would be, I think you've all worked against tremendous odds, the drawbacks of working in COVID alone and in isolation, um, even being on site at a distance and with masks, et cetera. Um, I really, my hat goes off to all of you. And again, I'd just like to echo what Tim said. Thank you, Francesca, for contributing as well. Um, I think both the students and the professors have more than um, made me proud today. Thank you all. Um, absolutely splendid, splendid work. I'd just like to remind everybody that um, we have Stephanie Gandolfi's capstone, which is tomorrow. It will be at seven o'clock. Uh, Professor Gwynn, I believe there's, uh, I don't know if they're open. Maybe I'm speaking not out of, uh, maybe I'm not saying something I shouldn't, but I don't know if the art history are available or not to the public. Yes, yes, exactly. The, the, we have the, um, there's the two art history capstone presentations tomorrow as well. Very, very different. Um, Naz is going to talk about the Bellini, um, the influence of the Bellini Venetian artists on at the court of Mehmed in Istanbul in the 15th century. And Sam Sweeney is going to talk about the problems of setting up a virtual museum. So something that actually is something that you've had firsthand experience of being part of a virtual exhibition. And that's what Sam is going to be talking about tomorrow. So two very, very different talks between four and six tomorrow afternoon. If I'm correct. Excellent. And if I'm not mistaken, all of these will be, we, we will ma make all of this available as, as videos on our website. So yeah, you'll be able to share the presentation with all of your friends and family. And uh, of course, you'll be able to visit virtually the, the, the gallery. It should be up, I think, for at least a year. Is that right, Marina? Yes, it's right. We, we can have it for a year. And you just, uh, I don't know, you, yeah, you go on Kunst Matrix and you can check in AR uh, spring, uh, for, yeah, spring 20, 2021 and then you will find it. But I think it will be also connected with the website. Didn't we do that last year? I think so so yep. you can go also on the website and then you can go in and, and try to find your way around, <laughs> which is not always easy. <laughs> We are trained by now, <laughs> but sometimes you get lost in the nowhere, but this is also fun. <laughs> okay, well, Good. I think that's a wrap. Th thank you all. I hope you enjoyed it. Complimenti a tutti. And, uh, um, you know, uh, have, enjoy your, uh, your time off or 
if you're graduating or whatever you're doing, I guess. Um, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll see.